In this video, we'll be learning about the common segment theorem and its converse. If you notice, it says if AB is congruent to CD, then AC is congruent to BD. Basically, what it's saying is if you have two parts of a segment that are congruent to each other, and you add the same amount to both of those pieces, then the segment and the new piece will be congruent to the segment and the new piece. This is also true for the converse. If AC, the, whole, the segment and the new piece, is congruent to BD, then AB is also congruent to CD. If we look back at this, if we assume that AB is, let's say, 5 and BC is 8, or let's say 3, then we know that all of AC will be 8. So we also know then that BD will also equal 8. Let's try a problem with it and see what we can do with it. This says AB is congruent to CD. So from that, we can gather that AC will also be congruent to BD. That's what the theorem says. Let's label the picture. BC equals 10. AC, this whole segment here, equals 6x minus 4. And BD, this whole segment here, equals 4x plus 12. We gathered from the theorem that AC is congruent to BD. So I can write AC equals BD. And from that, I can plug in the measure of AC, which is 6x minus 4, and set it equal to 4x plus 12. Now we just use algebra to solve. Subtract 4x from both sides and add 4 to both sides. So 2x equals 16. And now we divide by 2 to finish it off, so x equals 8. Now the question is not asking for x, it's actually asking for ad. But we need the x equals 8 to solve the rest. So if we look back at segment ac, we know segment ac will be 6 times 8 minus 4, which equals 48 minus 4, which equals 44. From that, I can gather all of ac is 44. But we already know BC. The part BC is 10, and the whole segment AC is 44. So I do 44 minus 10, and that gives me what's left for AB, which is 34. And since AB is congruent to CD, I know CD will also be 34. So to figure out segment AD, I do 34 plus 10 plus 34, and that gives me 78. We move on to this problem, and it's a similar problem. It says AB is congruent to CD. At this point, you should take a moment, pause the video, and try this problem out on your own. Let's go ahead and label the problem. BC is 12. CD is 2x minus 4. And BD, this whole portion here, is 4x plus 2. As we learned a couple days ago about segment addition, I could take part of a segment, add it to its other part, and get the whole. BC plus CD equals BD. Thus, 12 plus 2x minus 4 equals 4x plus 2. So 12 minus 4 gives me 8. So 2x plus 8 equals 4x plus 2. Now we just use basic algebra and solve. Track 2x from both sides. Track 2 from both sides. 6 equals 2x. So x equals 3. With that in mind, we're not looking for x. We're actually looking for ad. But we need this x equals 3 to solve. I know that bc is already 12. I can use this information about x equals 3 to find cd. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 4 equals... 2. So CD is 2. And because CD is congruent to AB, AB will also be 2. So 2 plus 12 plus 2 equals 16. Now I know some of you might think right now, well, how could BC be 12? It looks longer than AB, which is only 2. 
Well, in geometry, you have to remember you can never assume from a picture that anything is bigger or smaller. You can only go off of what's given to you. Let's look at one last problem, a little more complex of a problem. Once again, take a moment, pause the video, try to set up the problem, and see if you can solve it. Okay, let's go ahead and label AB is x squared plus 2x. CAD is 6x plus 12. The instructions tell us that AC, this whole portion right here, is congruent to BD, this whole portion right here. We learned from the converse earlier that if AC is congruent to BD, then AB is also congruent to CD because they have a common segment between them. So I can say that AB equals CD. Okay, we're back. Sorry about the interruption. There we learned that AB is congruent to CD, so we can write AB equals CD. And we already know what AB is. It's x squared plus 2x. And we know what CD is. It's 6x plus 12. Now notice we have a quadratic here because we have an x squared, and we have a middle term of x. So that means we're going to need to get this problem in standard form before we can do anything. So we need to move the x's all together, and we need to move the numbers all to the same side. So we get x squared minus 6x minus 12 equals 0. I'm sorry, x squared minus 4x because 2 minus 6 is 4x minus 12 equals 0. Now, the way I teach this to factors, we use a little t-chart. We put the last number first, we put the middle term second. And we start looking for the factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 4. So let's see, negative 4 and 3, that adds up to negative 1, so that can't be it. Let's try 6 and negative 2, that gives me 4. So I'm close, but I need the sign to be different. So let's try negative 6 and positive 2, and that will give me negative 4. So that is, those are the factors I need to use. So I come up here, x minus 6, x plus 2 equals 0. So I write each of these separately to 0, and I solve. So I add 6 to both sides, so x equals 6. Subtract 2, so x equals negative 2. Those are my two x solutions. Now I need to plug both of these in to see if they work. So if I take negative 2 and plug it in to 6x plus 12, I get 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12, plus 12 is 0. And since I've actually drawn a segment, a segment can't have zero distance or else it wouldn't exist. It'd just be a point. So I can't use a negative 2 because I got a zero distance. So I'm going to use the 6. And it's asking me just for CD. So 6 times 6 is 36, plus 12 is 48. And that's my solution. But don't forget to work on the worksheet, and that is Common Segment Theorem. Thank you for watching.